soul family welcome to the matrix oracle my name is audrey this is your full moon in libra and lunar eclipse reading according to your moon placement so we're going to do this by elements if you're new to the channel we start with the element of the event so here libra air this is going to be for my natal air moon so if your moon is in gemini libra or aquarius those messages are for you but it is also the collective message before getting started i'm going to invite you to like this video to support the channel to grow but also check in the description box as i'm launching this special promotion for the equinox we are entering this new zodiac wheel with two eclipses so eclipse season first the lunar eclipse there we are for those messages march 25th 2024 but very upcoming after we have april 8th a solar eclipse so if you are feeling inclined to look into the stars and see what is in store especially for you go and check it out in the description box all right Let's get started with the collective message and my air moon placement right now. All right, all right. Let's see what we have for you uh, collectively and for my air moons. Let's see first. Very mystical energy, I have to say. I was picking the mermaids, the dragons, and then uh, the dreams of Gaia. A lot of you know um attunement especially i feel to the emotional layer of body okay let's see what we have oh yes freedom independence and self-determination the ace of fire beautiful added bonus dragon energy because we have a dragon card here creation interesting i'm feeling it right now it's almost i'm hearing like the right to create the right to create your own story the right to you know it's that realization of your sovereign self that I'm feeling right now. More fire energy here with the nine of fire. Interesting, because this card has, um, you know, some some energy that I'm feeling. But I remember from the booklet that spoke of removing limitations. But do you see how there is this almost like imagine you're this rose, you're that beauty your heart your soul everything that you've learned as well holds this magnificent beauty and it's like it's almost like a protective layer coming from your hand chakra so i feel there could be some um oh wow i just saw that there's also some sacral activation it could be third eye activation heart activation and maybe also throat here i feel it, it it's really attuning you to um to create from a different space you know it feels that if you were born with a moon in an air placement but also collectively this lunar eclipse is removing something that used to limit us in terms of our creative self. Let's see what else. Oh, <laughs> an air dragon helps you rise above earthly matters, communicate honestly, brings inspiration and hope, and see life from a higher perspective. You know, this is so interesting. I just feel called to share this with you because, you know, I usually feel the cosmic energies before I get to the cards. I actually, until I feel and 
have some of the insights through my meditative practices, I'm actually would be blocked if I don't have that space created for the energy. And what I'm feeling here, something that I've received in terms of creation, where I saw how in my life, the many times where I created and made a wish from the depth of my heart. And what I mean by the depth of my heart, it was almost like something like, it's deep, but at the same time, it's so light, just like a child. Oh, I would love this. You know, like just something that you just feel very accessible. Oh, I would love to go and visit this place. Oh, that would be so nice. Versus the times where I would, wouldn't say I would make a wish, that I would set a goal. Oh, I would like this amount of money. Oh, I would like this and that materially. I saw in my meditation how the difference of those energy felt to me and how my mind almost constricted. Because what I said, especially knowing that money is a tool, for example, it's if it doesn't have a specific purpose or if it's not for a specific object, it was kind of showing me, well, is it money that just is supposed to be in the bank? And if it's just in the bank... Is it out of fear that you want it there? Because money is supposed to flow. So I was getting a lot of insights about creation as a divine creator. And I was seeing how when I made those wishes that sometimes were like almost, I had many things in my life that showed up again. But when it came so genuinely from my heart, and especially based off an emotion, on an emotional moment, it would manifest so rapidly and magically that I would be overjoyed and it would create this momentum. And what I feel here is that with this lunar eclipse, I had already foresaw because of what I saw in the astrology of the star map, that there was a certain ritual or habit that was going to be removed, especially in terms of money, because it's a moon that happens in the 10th house. So something that related to money, and that would be victim mentality, um, scarcity mentality. So here we're seeing that we're being involved in starting to remove some of those entanglements especially here because i feel that some of you have to make sure that you protect your innocence your joy your lightheartedness especially with the air factor so it takes momentum and that you're seeing things from a higher perspective. So it was, you know, I kind of tried to give you a gist of what I was feeling because there was a lot happening. And now that I'm thinking about it, you guys, I was meditating with the moon. I was. Yeah, see, at the time, you know, I'm, I'm not doing anything on purpose. Hey, I'm going to meditate so I can get the... Med I, I, I just follow my flow and then it unfolds. And I think that some of you, this is kind of part of the message. Follow what feels right for that moment. Because then it naturally opens the gateways for you to move through situations without feeling energy blocks. And if you feel energy blocks, there's no need for frustration. But it's actually your call to see what it is that we're still maybe holding on to that might be affecting this rose, this beauty, because you are beautiful. You have that energy. So let's see here with the um, 
erotic tarot this is more about your kundalini so maybe we can get some messages here i did not know why those cards came up you know with the decks and but now i understand as i'm channeling the um the message wow look at this the knight of wands look at what we were talking about about momentum and the fire element being, you know, this, this, this drive, this fast paced communication and creation with the universe. There's something that is collectively removed. And here it might be, you know, very unique. We're, we'll pull some oracle cards if we can get some more insights if the <laughs> universe shall indulge us in more details. Um, but there's definitely, look at this, a lot of blessings are coming collectively. And in terms of creation, new creations are arising. Some of you, I, I feel it also because of the equinox energy. There's a new wave of downloads. And that means some of you, it's all my, it might be also about do how to do things because of the placement in Libra. You know, maybe some of you, you'll have to change your relationship of how you build your routine or how you do things or how you, you know, um, maybe launch certain things. You know, for me, I really have to create that space for reflection, for honoring the energy so it comes without the restriction of the mind, which can be sometimes a little bit of a challenge, don't get me wrong. Um, but here it seems that collectively we are doing this together at a higher pace, okay? So if you have an air moon, that's definitely coming for you like twice twice as fast, okay? <laughs> Look at this. The Four of Cups. Something that you did not expect coming. Something like it's almost like everything. There's a surprise. But the surprise, what I'm feeling is that it's not coming from anywhere. She's looking at nature. But she is the abundant nature. So it's like the surprise is not from out there. It's from here. It's from within. Some of you definitely with, when dragon's energy are showing up in my readings, that this is my sign for breath work. I do have an album that speaks of um, your true abundant nature. If you go and check it out, you will have access to the two parts that help you even do psychic surgery. So your first one is like the awareness of your imbalances. So for this lunar eclipse, if you feel that the energy is draining you, you're not in the flow of the high new cycle and cosmic vibe, then just practice this breath, the microcosmic orbit breath, Especially if you use the frequency, you will have a lot of binaural beats that support the recalibration of your right brain and your left brain hemispheres and put them together so you can get some awareness. Hey, what is it that I might need to release? Okay. And then the second one, you're actually able to do psychic surgery. I was impressed when I discovered the uh, studies about those specific binaural beats it literally speaks of psychic surgery on that that that, he, that healing layer. Um, so you can do this and you will also find a video tutorial for all the type of breath work. If you want to join the YouTube membership, then you will have access to one that helps you activate and expand. So four totals type of breath. I do explain all the breath work, but the videos will give you the binaural beats so you can work with the recalibration of your brain hemispheres, okay? You can use this. This is something I discovered. You can use it at night, okay? Um, at first, I was always doing the breath work with those frequencies, but then I also play those <laughs> interesting, the four, okay? I fall asleep recently, especially since 2024. I've been falling asleep to those four at night to make sure that my brain waves know how to calibrate to this type of healing when I do breath work so I can tap and tune into this type of frequency right away. 
okay last but not least wow like wow the wheel of fortune we're changing and, and not like this is i forgot the name of this symbol triskelion sorry maybe not at all but uh something with try obviously uh i remember one time working with the symbol doing uh, some chanting with my receiving hand so my left palm on the symbol that i drew and i started chanting i started gathering such an inflow except that at the time i was holding on to a certain pattern a negative conditioning and oh boy it made it <laughs> really intense for me where I build more of that negative pattern momentum but you know it it made me very aware of it obviously and I was like wow this is powerful so some of you if you are a little bit mystical like myself uh that those are little hints and clues that I give and share um with you through those messages okay so what I'm seeing this this is there's an inner activation here but you're going to want, because the momentum is coming. With this lunar eclipse, the momentum and the intensity is here. And if you are feeling off, then you know you have to free yourself. And maybe also, there could be something about boundaries, because this is also Aries season. Aries is a gatekeeper, is a grid worker. It knows proper boundaries for creation, it knows how to set up the ground for creation. And here, through your breath, through, you know, understanding what lives inside of you, you're going to have a lot of higher awareness of how to go into the momentum that you actually want to nurture. Okay? I already pulled some of the frequencies that didn't help you. Obviously, working with the moon, highly beneficial. But let's see if there's something else. And of course, I am not surprised. Ending energy and desire entanglement, part of the super empath playlist. Some of you, especially with this. <laughs> I'm sorry. But you see this? It's about creation and with the spider. I'm sorry. If I laughed, it's because... I saw some of you being entangled in other people's web. And what I mean by this is that your lack of confidence in your own creative power and sovereignty is making you follow more of a path that is aligned with other people's desires versus yours. And you might be still, you know, your ego fighting. No, but it's not true, Audrey, or not even just Audrey, but, you know. Um, I'm, but it's an energy boundary. It's an energy that actually create that space, you know. Just like when I said about the example for my meditation about like, okay, when I manifest from my heart, it's very easy. When I manifest from my mind, I was seeing the limitations, but I was also able to tap with much more ease when I was comparing the two field of creation that the mind had also reason maybe out of fear to want certain things. Maybe it could be status. Maybe it was because there's a lack of confidence. I need to have those things to have a certain deservingness or worthiness in this reality. Okay, so I feel that the entanglement could even be at a greater layer. And because it's a 10th house, it could be the design around success. By the way, the uh, solar eclipse is also going to be in a 10th house energy. And it's going to be about your power. It's going to be in Aries. It's going to be about your power and your initiation. And it's going to be just smack in between the North Node and Chiron. And that's going to be super beneficial. But that's going to highlight any type of wounds around the lack of a sovereignty, a lack of feeling, um, you know, um, fearful of scarcity, victim mentality, and things like that. Okay? So, let's see first under the deck before I even 
go into the wisdom of the oracle. The shadow. Ooh. Regeneration. Wow. My YouTube members, I do have a 15-minute super efficient nervous system regeneration power nap frequency that I use for my power naps. It puts me right smack, like within seconds, I'm like super napping and I'm waking up within the last 10 seconds of it because of the way the binaural beats and everything is set up. Now, you don't have to always fall asleep to it, but what I feel as some of you, especially with the high momentum that's going on with this energy, you want to catch yourself when if you are seeing and feeling the negative momentum, you got to shut down the computer because it's your mind. Shut it down. Take a breather, take a walk, take a nap. Shut it off. This is going to be your shadow. This is interesting. This is the shadow. This is almost like realize that you're getting a new software. You're getting a new way of being. The number 46 in the angles of the zodiac speaks, it's in Scorpio, and it speaks of mediumship, being a bridge. You want to allow those energies to come your way. You need to create that space. All right, let's see what else. I'm loving those messages. By the book. Interesting. With the number 11. I'm feeling DNA here because I'm like asking like, what is this by the book? And I'm feeling the ancestors. I'm feeling the lineage. I'm feeling that some of you, you don't realize this is like the higher self and this is like the many layers of body. This is the first time that I'm ever seeing this card this way, but it's almost like use those principles. Oh, wow. It's the first time that I'm even seeing this little face. As if it's just a tapestry, you know? It's all... An illusion. Your, your physical body is an illusion compared to the immensity of everything that you are and everything that you're meant to bring here. But you got to create that space. You got to make sure that that space is there and that you hold on to higher rituals for the space to actually be almost like seeded, planted, and born, okay? Because it is there, but it is on a spiritual layer, etheric. We want to bring those, those seeds into that physical layer. And it's, again, everything that you have inside you is already there, but it's the energy that awakens the seed already in you. Just like by the book, this was faded. This cosmically, divinely orchestrated for a unique version, a version you haven't seen yet of yourself. You haven't met that version yet. And boy, oh boy, let's see what else we can get about this version. <laughs> Am I being too greedy in information? <laughs> we'll see. Okay, well, yes and no, I'm guessing, because it's just a, the truth, the truth of your heart. Oh my God, this reminds me just so much of my meditation again, you guys, because I told you, like the, the way that I was uh, connecting to the equinox energy and the opening of those eclipse energy that I could feel moving through me was that I just wanted to make wishes for my heart my heart space because as i was wow it's interesting i'm feeling a, a very little pinch here um in my ether finger 
So some of you, maybe there was a block on the spiritual layer, maybe believing that the universe has your back. The number 14 in the angles of the zodiac will speak of, you know, really have this higher allegiance and commitment to your spiritual self, to dedicating yourself to this, to this type of work. So this is, those are the details, like what is this version? It's the authentic self. It's more and more and closer and closer to everything that is truly dear to your heart. I'm loving this, you guys. I trust that it supported you in many blessed ways. If you need uh, personal support and want to enjoy my new promotion, I'm so excited about it so I can read those exact lunar and solar events for you. You know, that full moon and uh, new moon eclipsing and removing those things, you can look in the description box below for those details. I'm sending you many blessings and much love and light. If you were born under a water moon natal placement, so moon in Cancer, Scorpio, or Pisces, those messages are for you for this special lunar eclipse in the sign of Libra. I strongly suggest you always watch the first element, which is the collective reading uh, according to whatever placement it is. So here, air for Libra, just to get an insight of the collective energy and message. Now, let's get your specific messages, my dear water moons. So first, we have interesting farewell to the moon appreciate and enjoy the lunar light and cycles wow my i'm not surprised you guys you know water is very connected to the subconscious to the intuition to the teachings of the moon so i'm going to right away encourage you to meditate with the moon frequency actually a lot of the space i created for receiving those messages were through meditating with the moon i totally had not put together at the time um, that it was going to be for the lunar eclipse i was just following my intuition so i feel that this is part of your message here that one of the things that might be removed, because if you watch the collective reading, there's some freedom that's coming. There's something that needed to be removed that is going to be eclipsed out of your life because is going to be illuminated with, you know, understanding and awareness. And it's probably related to a subconscious pattern but something that was maybe blocking your intuition. Something that could have been going on for a while with the word cycle. And what I feel with the number 17, which is in the angle of the zodiac replacement, that really aligns you and speeds up your manifestation through synchronicity. So that means alignment with between the dream world and the reality or the physical world, <laughs> what's real, um, but also like a lot of confirmation through signs, okay, through synchronicity, through numbers. There's going to be a lot that is going to be synchronized, is going to be revealed to you, so make sure that you pay attention to those signs, to those uh, numbers, maybe repetition of ones, maybe of sevens, even the number 17 itself. Next, we have desire. With this, the, I'm sorry, I, you'd ne we had a huge fire dragon energy in displacement for the collective reading. So there's messages there that, you know, definitely are waiting for you, my water moons, about your desires. Some of you, I feel like once you'll hear it, it will click. There's something that in your brain, in your mind needs to click. You see, it's like it's, it's an activation. Some of you, if you let it in, it's going to in 
to align you. There's an alignment here that I feel strongly that could have been blocked in the past. Let's see if there's a reason why. Ooh, the counselor. What a beautiful... Oh my God, this energy I'm feeling is just so beautiful. Look at those whales. Some of you, I know that I, I, when I was going to say whales, I know it has nothing to do with it. <laughs> but I heard seals. And I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, those are not seals, Audrey. I know it's not your first language, but not let's get totally confused here. But when I repeated seal in my mind, I was like, some of you, it's about your Mayan seal. Okay? In the Mayan calendar, you, the zodiac signs are not zodiac signs, they're called seals. And I feel as some of you, maybe you're getting activated to that level of cosmic energy, okay, where the Mayan calendar has wheels among wheels among wheels. It's a very complex, but some of you, I would say, go into my um, link, my link tree. It's probably down at the bottom at the description box. And you will see that your Mayan sign holds a lot of wisdom. Read about it. And some of you, maybe you're ready for this galactic cosmic upgrade. I feel that you. there's an activation that I can feel in your aura. You're allowing more of maybe the lunar energy in flux you know, and coming through you, that's going to activate the back of your third eye. And there's something that is going to be born more in the front because here it's with the sun. And I'm not surprised as this equinox energy is starting the eclipse season with this lunar event here with the lunar eclipse. But then April 8th, we have the solar eclipse. I do have a promotion for this that I'm launching because I felt how magnificent this energy was meant to be but if you're feeling some misalignment and you're feeling blocks definitely looking at how this energy is impacting your chart and what it's trying to release could be very supportive okay if you're feeling that maybe need for counsel but you're receiving some deeper guidance about how to be a strong manifester from the heart field. Wow, I'm just not, everything that's coming out of my mouth feels like so unexpected. <laughs> oh my God. Wow. Okay. Earth and water dragon. Yin. Yin, yin, yin. Look at this creates the foundation for new growth. Look at this, another cycle of the moon. Oh my God, my water moons. A fresh start is coming with new opportunities. Nurture your ideas and harvest the abundance. You definitely need to watch the collective reading because I was sharing about how I was seeing the the fastness, but the magic of my wishes over my goals, you know, the wish that I set from my heart, I would, you know, just like the, the breath, I would love this, that must be magical to have this, versus, all right, I want to have this, and this, and this, <laughs> just, just saying, like, yeah, I, I'm just, I, I'm boring myself, just, <laughs> just with this tone you know it's almost like it's just such a different field when you wish from your heart and I feel that some of you maybe there was uh, some entanglement which was something that was from the collective reading some past entanglement some past karmic debts or resolution you had to there were some cycles that you had to go through my uh, water moons and you're coming into a new wheel, a new fresh start. So make sure that you align to the cosmic cycle. Make sure that you allow those energies to bless you 
you know? I feel, it's almost like let them shower you, let them warm you like a warm fire where you can sit by. Mm -hmm. Some of you definitely, your connection to water, I would say even, especially if you have a Cancer moon, uh, natally, um, looking at the moon just is activating for you overall. Just, but even just as a water moon, you guys, this is, you know, that, that connection is very, very strong. I can feel it. It just it feels very nurturing. But again, if you're not, when the energy is coming, as I'm releasing this, the energy is present, it's felt. Um, if you're feeling tension and you're feeling anxiety, know that there's something that it needs to be released. Don't fight it. Allow it. I would say, go and check out my pharmacy, by the way. If you have any anger or irritability, like things that just make you feel antsy or just off, go and check out that new um, playlist. For now, I just have one. <laughs> pharmacy healing, uh, you know, like as a, as a support, but it's been really supportive for me in, in releasing somatic to like a very physical, emotional layer of, you know, what my body could be. Almost like reflect, you know, if you've ever felt um, very short, reactive, short-fused. I, I was seeing a lot of it just being expelled from my body with the frequency. So I feel that especially with this water quality, that you could have absorbed a lot of those things because you're so sensitive in your nature. Um... So I want you to nurture it as something that empowers you. And that could be some part of the work that you have to do here. Five of Wands. Okay. This is more of your Kundalini energy. Let's see if we have... Also, here we have some inner conflict for sure. Inner conflict maybe in your desires... This is the death card. I was like wondering who she was. <laughs> the death card. There's something that needs to go. Something's got to go. We're going to look at this with the oracle. There's some inner turmoil that wants to be brought to an end. Okay? Not because it's trying to bring you to your knees, even though if you're feeling an intense energy like this, Please address it as, as a sign that this energy just wants you to release it because it has a greater purpose. It wants to be recycled for a greater purpose for your life. Yes, the world. You're going to want to do some energy work, my water moons. Definitely here. Um, I would say with this flower that she's holding i'm feeling the chironic energy of bringing gratitude to some of those maybe cycles that could have been harsh there's a whole lot of circles and wholeness that i'm feeling for you so you probably had to process a lot and i do feel you know for you for the chiron wounded healer go and check out your chiron needle placement and listen to the frequency according to your zodiac sign. This is super efficient. It took me weeks to understand how to help resolve this karmic wound. And realize one thing. That Chiron, I love it now because I understand more and more as I work with it more and more. Your Chiron wound actually blesses you with becoming your own guru. Everything that you are addressing to heal those wounds is going to give you access to your abundance because you're going to know how to heal yourself and that means when this becomes your gift to others. The frequency of knowing what is your soul medicine. Music is mine. Sound engineering is mine. Some of you, it could be part of it. It could be something else. Whatever it is, it is meant to be revealed in greater ways for this cycle. You're, you're definitely here very sensitive um, to this energy. Yeah. 
Let's see in terms of frequency on top of listening to the moon and all the other recommendation. Oh, perfect. I love this for you. Yin yang frequency healing. Try to rebalance your organs, your inner, your inner song. You know, there's a playlist in the yin yang playlist. You have one yin frequency, one yang frequency and this and one yin yang together. Very efficient. The 12 organs playing with vertebrae very activating, very deep healing here. All right, let's look at the shadow. What maybe there's an insight about this inner turmoil that we were feeling for you. Oh, interesting. There's a mask. There's a mask you're wearing. And I feel as some of you, it might be a, what you think is a protection. Or maybe some of you, if you're super emotional and people know that you're super emotional, the way they see that emotion as something that makes your life so hard, you know, as an empath, or like, oh my God, I'm, I wouldn't want to be you because you feel and absorb everything. Well, that's, a, that's not true. That's not your truth. Maybe you've rehearsed this as your truth, but you have a lot of energies here, especially as this, you know, is occurring. Those eclipses are occurring in Aries season. Aries is about creation, is a grid worker and gatekeeper of the creative field as you being the creator. So there's a shadow and I'm putting it under the cycles and there's a mask. We want to remove this mask and some of you, it might be that one energy is more predominant over the other. We want to make sure that we align this. It could be connected to your Chiron wound because we mentioned this. So you want to transform. Uh, some of you, if you are YouTube members, I would suggest if you work with the yin yang frequency, then I want you to jump after that into the void. The void is one of my membership frequency for helping the process of ego, you know, death and rebirth. So that could be very, very supportive. Let's see what else. So I feel the, the dragons, you know, wants more energy. Okay, three. When the dragons come into my readings, I know breath work is going to be super important. I detailed this enough in the collective reading, so I let you go and venture there. Let's see. Wow. Look at this. interesting that reminds me of one meditation I did so I guess I'm gonna share this with you because I do have this placement in the zodiac 51 this is where I have my Mars this speaks of soul medicine and I have a rainbow frequency where I chant an ancient form of the name of God who okay H U. I recently was, as I was created the space for those readings, I was chanting the um, Satanama mantra that I suggest in the description of this video. And then I was called to use who because of the rainbow frequency. I have a rainbow bridge uh, frequency uh, video where this is the mantra. And when I did this, it was also supporting the ego rebirth because the rainbow bridge helps you bridge the gap between realms. And sometimes, you know, this is why we say this for, you know, animals that pass or people that pass across the rainbow bridge because those have access to different realms, different expression of density. So here it could help you when you are... <laughs> bringing down this mask okay you're not trying to break it we're trying to actually release the mask so we can actually feel this is a golden mask the gold is here it's not on the face it's not on what people see it's within 
And once you realize that, and some of you, I feel this is part of your chironic wound and your gift as a healer, as, as a human being that knows how to heal itself, there's this realization that's going to come for you. I don't know why I feel. I want to put it on the selenite. Okay, that came through in the collective reading by the book. There was a different perception of this as a DNA activation, which we already felt for you very beneficial. Oh, same. <laughs> and regeneration. You are literally being all of this, all this inner turmoil. Some of you, I feel that it could have been inherited because of the DNA that I'm feeling now I'm putting it there. But you have within your cells also the ability to, I'm feeling Kali's energy here, destroy, <laughs> remove some of those blocks. You have a sacred energy, especially your feminine here that can support you. If you want to work with Kali, you can chant her Bija Seed Mantra, Krim, K-R-E-E-M. I love bringing Kali into a certain aspects of my meditation when I feel uh, she's needed to create space. So some of you might be there. You might tap into this and want to use Krim. Then you might want to use other things. I let you kind of tune into your intuition in terms of working with those frequencies. If you have any questions, you can always email me. Some of you, you know where to find me on Instagram. You can DM me. Um, but I do have this sp special Equinox, you know, package that I'm offering because I can feel how this lunar and solar eclipse so close to each other in this airy season and with its placement, how working this yin and yang aspect can be so beneficial. So especially I've been feeling it very strongly for you, my dear water with all your cards. Okay. So if that's something you want to check out, please do so. Otherwise, that's what I have. And I'm trusting that you're going to really allow this energy to move through you because there's just so much richness, so much savoring of this life on earth that you deserve and that is faded for you. All right. Thank you so very much. Namaste. If you were born under a fire moon, so a natal placement in a moon in Aries, a Leo, or Sagittarius, those messages are for you for this lunar eclipse in the sign of Libra. First, I do suggest that you always watch the collective reading because it will give you a theme and an idea of what it is that is going on and then you'll get deeper messages here let's look at your cards all right we have atlantis rapid development excellence success wow what an energy there is a very fast momentum going on you know through the collective message that we're seeing there's a removal you know it can eclipses can be very brutal if we have ignored our intuition because of just the intensity that they create cosmically but at the same time if you're allowing yourself to align to your higher guidance and your higher self especially for you i feel that there's an embodiment, there's a layer and level of embodiment, my dear fire moons, that you've never experienced thus far. Let me see that. I don't think I know. There's a connection between the water and the earth and fire here. There's almost like an alignment with her hands. Now I'm feeling that it's almost like there's there were some past elements 
that you had to gather to be at that level. Okay, and whatever needs to be removed is rapidly <laughs> being removed, uh, but at the same time to rapidly bring something in return. Let's see what else. The two of fire, the two of wands. This is interesting. This is the first time I've seen this card a hundred times that I'm paying attention to their hands on their heart. And the two of wands originally in the tarot speaks of, you know, planning. But in this deck, it can speak of it can speak sometimes of competition and entanglement, which is part of the collective reading, the quantum entanglement that can be still affecting you. But here it feels that there could have been two sides of you. One that was creating more out of the mind and necessity, fear, obligation feeling weighted by some energy. There's one that is much lighthearted, that has an inner knowing. I feel there's a contrast. You, There's a transformation that is very contrasted in you. Like I feel like your energy field is going to be very transformed here. Let's deep, deep dive a little bit more. Wow. Yeah, look at this, because even in the emotions, there's a contrast here, that much light and that much darkness. Some of you, you had, wow, my fire moons, you, you, I feel that you had to, you had to walk a path of darkness to realize how much light you were holding in. You know, at, like the stars, they're, you're, they're shining all the time, but we're really only noticing how bright they are and how beautiful they are when it's nighttime. So there was, when I said that, I feel like some of you, you had to develop a lot of your yin, your feminine energy. And through the development of your feminine energy, your empathy, your heart field, now with Atlantis, you're reaching a different layer and level of empowerment through your mind, but guided by your heart. I feel like this is, this is there's a heart-mind coherence, an alliance, almost like a power couple that you're reaching, a power couple, a power union. You know, putting the power through the integration of feminine and masculine that you're reaching and I'm seeing. And that some of you, you know, with this lunar eclipse, if there isn't anything in the way of this power, it will be shown and removed very drastically, very clearly. It doesn't have to be drastic, like heavy, except if you resist. I want to insist on this. Because I've seen myself, <laughs> you guys, I speak from experience. I've seen myself when the energies feel like, like I'm dying because the, the, the ego death, it's because I'm holding on. Okay, so if there is discomfort, allow yourself to find space and calmness into the discomfort so there can be more space for you to see clearly because this energy will be drastically showing you the contrast, the whatever you've been living. And I feel as some of you, your reality is going to quantum leap very much so here. Wow, that's, that's impressive. I feel impressed. Some of you, maybe you're going to be impressed <laughs> by whatever is, is actually coming your way. Yeah. So the dragons showed up, and when dragons show up in my readings, that means breath work, <laughs> breath work, uh, in a, in order to transcend the reptilian mind and part of our brain into an ascended master version of the dragon, one that is aligned with the truth, with the highest truth. Let's see what you have. Earth dragon. Wow, look at this. It's in your veins. 
clears your path and the land around you. Before I read, I just felt like there's there's a there's power running through you that is very intense. You might have a lot of physical reaction to this energy sensation. It says here, stay grounded, be ready to serve. Stuck energy is clearing. You can move forward in life. Yeah, you're you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna more than move forward. I feel I feel this is jump. This is quantum leaping. Um, definitely, you've been taking some momentum uh, since I feel like some of you it's leap day. And there was some, some things that you had to put behind you, and now that you have, and maybe there's still some few things that you're removing if you're being called to fast okay we're in, we're entering spring cleaning here uh at least on the northern atmosphere but even if you are an equinox in the south and with the fall uh, this is a one of the best time for fasting and cleansing liver cleanse or any type of detox i've done myself 10 days three days prep seven days you know on juice um and it was it was so deep. I've never enjoyed a fast so much because I had my spiritual awareness and guidance. So some of you, this this comes back to um, maybe having developed a lot of your feminine principles. And the feminine principles is actually going to really allow you to be guided in the manifestation of your reality here. I'm loving, loving this. Wow. I knew there were blessings, you know, even though it's like a, this eclipse, I, I felt the word blessing and miracles very strongly for this energy. Very, very strongly. The strength. Let me see that. She's holding a tooth. She's holding a canine. One second, you guys, because I have to show you this. I work with all... When I was uh, detoxing, I actually had one tooth that was always kind of purging some tartar or whatever. It didn't matter how many times I brushed it. It seemed that it was constantly just purging. And I know that it was, if I'm not mistaken, it was my liver organ. I want to make sure that I have this right. And I want to see the canine. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Liver and gallbladder. Oh, which is the same because it's the canine. Yeah, it was my canine. Oh, there we go. All right. Teeth reflexology chart. Go and check it out. If you have teeth, especially if you're going to do a detox, I keep on, you know, purging some of the mucus or whatever. This is, this is showing you what organ um, needs some space. So if, if I'm seeing this right now, I would say go and check out my liver or you, and, and or gallbladder. The liver is yin and the gallbladder is yang. The liver allows you to receive the sacred self, the seat of the soul. It's just such an energy in Chinese medicine that, that, that's very primordial. Um, to have a clear, a clear, cleanse, detoxified liver. And the gallbladder working with it helps you to align your decision and the momentum of your decision together. So I feel that this could be a strong message for you to practice those two organs. By the way, they're connected to the wood, a.k.a. ether element. Didn't I talk about the ether here? I did. Ha! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> wow okay all right so there was something with this okay it's all connecting now now we have the nine of cups look at her fulfillment you wish fulfilled oh my god it reminds me the collective reading you know create don't set goals Create out of wishes, create out of excitement. Oh my God, I'd like this. Not wishful thinking or not like wimpy wishes. I'm talking about all oh, striking wishing. 
Yes, that's how much, almost like, I'm going to say it, hopefully YouTube doesn't censor me, orgasmic, think, wishful energy, wishful creation. Yeah. Yeah, there was maybe some rewiring. I feel it. You know what I feel for you? I feel that this energy you might have had naturally to want and desire things, but when it did not pan out and manifest, there might have been some blocks because you had to work with your feminine. Okay, maybe because this is a moon with a fire, so it's kind of uh, an opposition, an op duality, okay, with those principles and elements. And you had to learn how to create from the heart field and to create from, you know, from the heart, have those ideas being born in your mind. So you could have really all that is meant for you manifest before you. It's almost like it's just, it feels very royal, even with the Leo here. It's something that was dear to your heart to, um, to master. FYI, in case you felt like it was quite a, a challenge to get there. <laughs> Ooh, temperance. I love this temperance card on this deck. I just find her so exquisite. With the butterfly and an angel. This is like your... Some of you, you're probably very connected to the angelic realm. I just want to mention this. Or you like to work with angels. Um, but there's a transformation to a higher frequency here that is very obvious. <clears throat> Some of you, I'm seeing... Wow. <clears throat> Some of you, I'm seeing that you could have in your chart certain sacred geometry. She's having like a grand trine energy here that could have been playing out in your chart that could make you manifest certain things in certain ways. Meaning, um, you know, you could have, for example, a mystical rectangle, which would uh, create this, this energy where you can feel very intensively but nobody can see it from the outside it kind of creates an envelope sacred geometries do impact how people can see you how you're wired it helps you understand a lot of those things if you have never gotten your birth chart read i would highly suggest it for you my uh dear fire moons it feels um relevant here with the sacred geometry now, in terms of frequencies, you could work with the moon. Obviously, we're working with the lunar eclipse. And all of the ones that we mentioned, especially for the organs. And we have the staying true to yourself. I forgot to say that this is part of the super, the super empath playlist. So you might have been swayed in the past by your mind or the mindset that you thought was the mindset that you needed. Maybe it was a little bit like the strength just came up like, um, what did they, I forgot. Oh my God, it's such a famous say no pain no gain it's like it's it's something that i used to have very much in my mindset and um now i can't even remember it <laughs> oh yeah um it could be some old things that you were telling yourself the mind had to remove some of the old programs some of the old setting to allow the emotions to clear the way Almost like I'm seeing this vision of um, Isis clearing the way for Osiris to walk through this reality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would say some of you also look up your Ishtar. I feel Ishtar's energy in your chart. She is the asteroid 7088. If that's something that interests you, I also offer readings for her. There's a there's a shadow that we've been looking at 
those energies and I've been for every element looking at the shadows that could influence this. We talked about it a lot, but let's see. Mm, building blocks. Interesting with the no pain, no gain that we see a lot in uh, bodybuilding. <laughs> Um, but you see, remember, it was the programs, the mindset. I feel as some of you, you know, it could have been inherited because of... And some of you also, with those cubes, it feels very matrix. You had to go against... You had to be the glitch in the matrix. You had to create this through your intuition, which is interesting because the number 28 in the angles of the zodiac actually is in Leo and it speaks of foresight and intuition. You had to build blocks. You had to start living your life and building your life according to a different setting, a different program, one that would make you feel fulfilled and have amazing heart, mind coherence, temperance that allowed you to understand yourself in greater ways and follow your own, almost I would say, human design. Some of you are into in human design. I would suggest looking into it. I really like that myself. Yeah, when I tapped into it, there was a lot of my gift that I unfolded. Let's see what else. A lot of cars that I feel that wanted to fly right off the bat. It's almost like, okay... <laughs> I feel a lot of blessings that are coming through this eclipse season and this lunar eclipse is starting it. Um, it's revelation. Some of you, you've been feeling this since quantum leap, so leap day this year, 2024 to February 29th. But you're going to have more concrete manifestation of what that is and looks like. Okay. All right, we'll see if we want to look at those. I feel we will. So we had two cards on top. <sighs> I mean, come on. <laughs> Treasure Island. Oh, my God. I love this. You guys, I love this. I told you, there's just so much that wants to come forward. There's so much love. There's so much that you've been wanting that is coming forward in, in, in very unexpected, miraculous, wonderful ways here. I find it so cute, you guys. I had to tell you and share this with you. I have my little niece that is going to turn um, three and... I just want, I just yesterday decided to make her a sea turtle, except that the top of the shell is a strawberry, so a strawberry turtle. And just seeing this, I just love this because it just, she obviously fills my heart with lots of love and joy, but this is the type of energy that I feel. Now, number nine, interestingly, in the Zodiac is connected to Taurus and speaks of unconditional love. It speaks. So there's some of you, if you wanted to also manifest a relationship, manifest a baby, manifest just feeling a lot of abundant love. And that means money could be a bypass out of this, but there's definitely beautiful, beautiful energy beyond you know whatever struggles you may have faced okay if you're still struggling please take advantage of my equinox promotion here i just really feel strongly about it i haven't had released a promotion for a while and this one came up very strongly yes so we have the thinker and the gifts you had to rewire the thinking pattern. You had to reset some of the buttons. You know, you had just to review. You had to review. You had to experience it. So some of you, like, you had to experience that matrix and that, those limitations and the limitations of the mind, you know? Not because you're not powerful and you can't get to your goals, but more because you didn't want to be a fight. 
You didn't want it to be something you had to fight for, but something that was meant for you and that feels like it's almost like equal, you know, just like a relationship. Imagine like you always have to fight for the person to stay in the relationship. That doesn't feel good. So here it's like you had to just, a part of you knew that and wanted more flow, <laughs> just more flow. It was a long journey for some of you. I really feel it, but I feel that this phase, you're going to really feel the fulfillment of this wave. So I'm looking forward for this and for you to experience it. If you want to share some of your impressions in the comments, I would love to hear from you guys. Thank you so very much. I'm sending you many blessings and much love and light. Namaste. If you were born with a natal moon placed in an earth sign, so moon in Taurus, Virgo, or Capricorn, those messages are for you for the lunar eclipse in the sign of Libra, March 25th, 2024. I do suggest you always listen to the collective reading, so that would be air for this uh, particular lunar event and you'll get additional messages through your personal moon placement. For the mermaid energy, you have, ooh la la, <laughs> falling in love, kissing the divine in another and in yourself. You know, it's very interesting because while getting ready for your reading, my earth placement, it seems that I had to rehearse a lot. And while I was contemplating on what was happening, I was paying attention to this mermaid's hand and how she seemed to be listening and also as if she was getting ready to receive something. And I feel this is a message for you that there's someone but also something, something and someone that could be both for some of you, you're going to be golden, <laughs> uh, but that could be something that is very dear to your heart. And I feel because of this eclipse energy, you know, that maybe you did not receive this type of blessing before. This is something almost like sacred. It could be some of you a sacred union, especially with the number 20. This speaks of sacred union in the angles of the zodiac, even sacred kundalini, sensuality. But it's a, it's a union of the soul that delivers you from what has been weighing on you. So it could be also that love guides you through this energy. And I would say that would be a very strong indicator if you're not in that very loving energy, grounded energy, but at the same time butterfly in the, uh, you know, in the stomach or even in the mind, because, you know, like that excitement, effervescence I'm feeling. If you're not in that aligned energy for the lunar eclipse, you will know that there's something that needs to be removed because the, there's a lot of blessings for this eclipse season. I've been feeling it. I've been channeling it so far. You're the last element here um, but it does go through a removal of certain principles okay so let's see for you if we have more details and it could be regarding love and especially I feel for you seeing yourself through the eyes of the beloved seeing your divinity that could have been a block we have the three of earth here a sacred partnership with the divine. Wow. This is the three of pentacles. In the regular tarot, you have three people, you know, just like a couple getting married. There's a union. It's a seed. I feel as some of you, you may have suffered from making compromise and sacrifice in the past for the things or the ones that you loved and it may have weighed on you and your experience and your expectation of what could be possible for you. The Ten of Water, Ten of Cups. Oh my God, I love this. 
I love, 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 love. I love loving. You have such an align, a divine alignment to feel fulfilled in all levels of uh, emotional levels. It's not just a wish fulfilled. It's just your life and the people and the, the job, the, the relationships and the romance. Everything aligns because this lunar eclipse seems to align you with the love that you are. That means that if you're still doubting how lovable you are, if you're still not seeing yourself through the eyes of this love, then it might be more intense. You might, I, I'm not sure why if I heard the word depressed. If you're feeling depressed, lower, it's trying to show you how, how you're, there's a gap in the frequency that you need to breach, but it is going to through to be through letting go, surrendering. I would say if some of you have been a have a tendency to worry, I don't know if it's the earth element that makes you me feel this, you know, uh, sometimes being too grounded and that means being stagnant or just um, with the heaviness or just over worrying. If you've been worrying that things are not going to be as you wish them to be because you have certain dreams and hopes i would say make sure first of all you listen to the collective reading but make sure that when you make those wishes they come from a delight heart just like, like a, almost or i said that i think it was for also fire almost like orgasmic energy like not with any type of lows and all and because if you still do have that which you shouldn't judge it's just an indication hey if i'm not in that space when i'm making those wishes about what i want to manifest in my life and i wish to experience what is this energy what is it telling me let's see if we have details about this so the dragons showing up are usually uh an indication of breath work being quite of the important and essence I feel for you definitely watch the, the collective reading because when I said the word essence it's it's related to your true essence uh, my playlist my album that helps you with breath work orange gold dragon from Arcturus opens you to knowledge from the new golden age Carry the energy of the future. Be a guiding light. And we know love is the highest, is actually one of the highest frequency. They found that authenticity is higher than love. And I'll tell you why. Because when I feel that authenticity is love, the ultimate love embodied and how it looks like, when love is incarnated and in motion and how it moves. So authenticity is your highest frequency. And that means you allowing yourself to be and say and do all that you want. I see that some of you, you need to dance. There might be some womb healing that I'm feeling with this orange here. I do have in my survival kit uh, for super empath with empath. Uh, womb healings and detoxifying so go and check it out go maybe do also the psoas healing some of you you might have some past relationships that are still locked in your womb okay and held within the muscle of the psoas if you are a youtube member i would say work with the removing x's and hexes those patterns that could be in the way all right, those cards very much about your kundalini energy. This is the erotic tarot, erotic fantasy. Yes, tarot. <sighs> yes. Fool. There's a new beginning, but I feel that for some of you to relate 
to this and what could have blocked you in the past. <laughs> Being taken for a fool, okay, or just foolishly, you know, uh, fool, fool's rushing. I think it's a movie. If you haven't watched it, or you haven't watched it in a long time, I would suggest go and rewatch it. There might be a specific message for you. I love when we get movie uh, homework. <laughs> I love this. Okay, so let's see what else. Ooh, the Knight of Pentacles. You have an offer. It, definitely, there's someone coming. There's an offer coming. There's a renewal coming. Um, I do want to say, some of you, it could be a next coming. Coming again. Pay attention to how that feels. Okay? Because sometimes the eclipse bring old that needs to be removed. Or to witness a change in, you know, whoever comes your way, maybe they've changed, okay? Maybe there was a, it took a long time. But there's definitely something coming. And it depends on, obviously, it's the collective reading, so I'm not able to tap for everyone for those circumstances. But this, you see there's different birds here. There's a lot of birds. So there's a lot of messages in this little bag some of you, there could be also past lovers that come or past friends that come back uh, to make sure that you release some of the laundry bag. I heard dirty laundry. I don't know if some of you, you finalize some of those cycle and the lunar eclipse are here to remove those blocks. Yes, look at this, the five of cups. And in this one, what's interesting is, I think this is the first time I pulled this card in this deck. She reminds me a lot of the movement of the Eight of Cups, of moving away from something. But in this one, you see there's three cups that are poured and two that are new. And it's interesting because I'm going to mention it, but it's coming up. Some of you, you could have gone through a divorce. And you have to make sure that you're releasing the baggage of those that dynamic because there's a new pair of cups coming, okay? And that you may turn your back to because of the past wounds. There's a new offer that I'm feeling that is being born, but it shows that it depends very much. You have that very strong energy for you. It depends very much on how you experience this energy yourself, what this lunar eclipse is showing you. And by the way, this is why I felt so strongly. I had not released a promotion reading for a while now, and I have been called to do an equinox promotion where I'm going to be reading for the lunar eclipse and for the solar eclipse because of that yin yang factor so compacted uh, in each other and that is very much about removing certain old patterns that would be in the way of your money and your love especially for you with a moon in an earth placement the love factor is strong here I'm saying money with this lunar eclipse because the 10th house energy. I think I, I shared this with the collective reading. All right, let's see the frequencies for you. Oh, this is interesting. Okay, so if you are a YouTube member, go and check out the Crystal Heart Light Body Activation. That is a frequency that helps you activate your crystal, your fourth dimensional heart. So you can start activating then your crystal mind. So being able to create from the field of the emotions and, and the magnetic field of creation, which is much more powerful than the electric field of the mind. This is why the mind is more limited. It just doesn't have the same amplitude and the same power. It just doesn't. Uh, so that's for my YouTube members and 
everyone else, you can go and check out the Unity Consciousness. I feel that there's a lot of... There's everything that, everything that you've gone through here, my moon earth placement, my earth moon, or yeah. Um, everyone had a very specific role. And it might not be clear to you exactly, but it, I feel that as you deep dive within you and maybe address, I would say, so ass you know, uh, auric womb detoxifier. If you have access to the YouTube membership, I would say the heart womb recalibration, this, and then the unity consciousness. Everyone was put on your path for a higher purpose. I would say go and check out also your birth chart. If you have a lot of energies in the 7th, 8th, and ninth house that could be part of why because those those aspects are very much related to one-on-one -on -one relationship and then starting to step outside of the one-on-one -on -one when we go beyond the ninth all right let's look at the shadow first to deep dive a little bit more blessed is the shadow See, this is this is this is interesting because this is what I feel with some of you. Maybe there's a resistance to see how this was a blessing. If you, I have to mention this to you. You have to check out your chart. Maybe some of you you have a placement in Taurus between five and ten degrees. Okay. This speaks of divine blessing and silver linings, okay? And it's, it is meant for you to learn how to see the silver linings and have gratitude for the whole sum of your journey, okay? I feel that this is important for some of you to also know your chart, to understand and maybe having like this, this, this understanding of why you had to walk a certain path, why certain relationship had to be the way they were. All right, let's see. The tribe. Oh, your vibe attracts your tribe. And I feel that you were probably in the past attracting certain people that resonated to a few cycles of karmic understanding that you wanted to complete. You being here watching this is a sign and alignment that you're ready to step beyond those cycles, that you're ready to be kissed on your forehead, on the third eye by the divine. Some of you, I feel spiritual awakening happening, maybe twin flame activation, whether, you know, I, I do believe in the twin flame activation in terms of the chemistry between feminine and masculine and that happens within whether it manifests on the outside that's another story and you know a whole bunch of beliefs around it but i do believe in this activation within you know seeing the divine in all parts of the self and there's definitely here with this alignment you attracting you see how this giraffe's heart space is glowing out of the card? You're, you're glowing. You're going to be glowing in a different way. But you're going to have to watch out. I'm, I'm being called to look at the parrots next to them. The parrots are usually have to watch their words for they manifest. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> Last but not least, poised. It came in the reverse. I feel this is important for you, my dear Earth um, elements. It, I feel that it's kind of the energy of feeling grounded, but at the same time light. You know, not heavy. When you're poised, you're, you're almost like anchored in serenity. That's the first time that I'm <laughs> actually thinking about this way of explaining it. But that's what I feel for you. You see how she has like ballet 
um, shoes and she seems so light as if she's just jumped and leaping and or maybe just balancing on one toe. What's interesting though is that in this card, you know, ballet dancers, they are so graceful and they look so light and effortless when in actuality their whole body is under tremendous amount of tension. So I feel this is an additional message for you that, you know, there was a lot of things you had to experience to have this, this almost grace about life and the tension and the, and the things that can come your way. I would suggest if you're struggling with irritability and anger to go into my pharmacy playlist and work with anger uh, frequency irritability because maybe some of you there's some tension somatic symptoms that you want to release in your body that could be highly helpful all right my dear earth signs i you know that's what i have for you you can meditate with the moon definitely that can help you with the third eye this is the back of your third eye to see beyond this if you have any questions you can always you know email me send me dms if you know me on um, instagram how to reach me there so that's what i have thank you so very much for being part of my journey and sending you many blessings and much love and light Namaste.